Hey, what's up nerds? Vino here with a guide about mm, 24 hours before the event ends. Yeah, sorry about that. I bit off way more than I could chew these past few weeks. Uh, good news is, I was able to rush this in a morning on my Scuffed Mistake account, so if you haul ass now, you can get it done. Now before I go into this step by step, here are some things to keep in mind. If you have regular Saber Altria, you should run her for Altrium drops. If your team comps allow fast farming even without a specific support, or you can't run those teams anyway, consider grabbing one off your support list. Otherwise use supports that have the Drake CE since that increases Altrium drops too. As soon as you have enough badges, buy the damage CEs. I use gotcha CEs for extra badge drops, so you're going to complete those missions at different times than I did. However, they don't hardlock anything unless you're like one mission short of a milestone, so don't worry about that. If at any point you fall short of Altrium, keep listening and hit up the next free quest that comes up. There's some backtracking in the event, and you'll get the opportunity to have a head start in some missions anyway. With all that said, let's go baby mode. First off, we start with Texas Beyond 1, which gives you the Mystic Code. Then you move on to Texas Beyond 2. Do all the nodes to get Cultural and Martial Arts simultaneously, which is the 3-star CE. Run this when Bronze Badges are available, or just keep it on the whole time to not think about it. With this, you should have completed missions 1, 9, and 35. Once that's done, hit up the Texas Beyond free quest two times. This should complete mission 12. By the way, I'm going to be going full speed, so, you know, pause is needed. After this, you can do Texas Beyond 3. So once you get to the Billy fight, what you need to know is that he'll NP every turn. It's also worth noting that an AQA chain will not pop his bar even with the arts buff, so, you know, something to consider. Once you do pop his bar, he gains buffs including Invuln Pierce after a turn. So his second NP will kill you unless you NP him on turn 2. However, Ishtar's skill isn't maxed and she won't gain a full bar naturally. In fact, she'll even tell you to use a command spell for charge. I heard there are ways of using Anniversary Blonde to avoid this, but I didn't have it on Mistake, which is the account I'm doing this on, so I ran Atlas instead. You can actually use Ishtar's skill 2 on the first turn to null his NP, and then stun him on turn 2 with Plug Suit or even charge up with another MC. So you don't have to command spell, there are ways around it. With this done, you should have Mission 73 done. After that, do the Texas Beyond free quest until you have enough Altrium to leave the planet. For me, that was one run. Next, you do the main quest off to the Starry Sea, and then Tour Manual. This will complete Mission 10 and unlock the first set of bounties. But you won't have to deal with those right away. After that, do Goddess Scripture 1 and then Big Blue Tank 1. That'll complete Mission 13. At this point, you need Mission 56 to progress, and you could do this either on Big Blue Tank or Texas Beyond. I opted for Big Blue Tank, so all my calculations are going to be based off that. So I did that free quest twice. Big Blue Tank twice, which should complete Mission 56 and Mission 85. After this, you do Big Blue Tank 2, but don't use Archers in Node 2 since Anastasia has an anti-Archer passive in this fight. With that done, you should have missions 16, 28, 36, 57, 60, 61, and 94 done. After this, you have to do a Super Shortcut Scooter. If you're short on Altrium, now's a good time to farm some more. Doing Super Shortcut Scooter will complete mission 74. After this, you'll run into Kaiju Comet Alpha, which is a huge 350k health bore, so bring the big guns. Then comes Sargasso Abyss 1. Note 3 has an indestructible Tamamo Cat, so just stall until she NPs and tank through it, which ends the fight. This completes mission 45, and now you're gated by mission 64. To do this, do Sargasso Abyss's free quest twice. With mission 64 done, you can move on to Sargasso Abyss 2. Node 1 has a 3 bar Tamamo Cat. Uh, Node 2 has Lancelot, but he's a saber, but also not that saber. To deal with him, you can pick MHX as your support, the event MHX, and have her on your front line. Once you pop his first bar, Saberlot runs away. It's not like he's packing a lot of health in the first place, so don't sweat it either way. With this, you should have missions 20, 42, 52, and 53 complete. After this, buy the wanted poster of Space Cat for 200 Altrium in the shop, and uh, farm if needed. With that in hand, fight Space Cat. It's a 2 bar Tamamo Cat with stacking curse damage. Not too hard. You get Tokiomi's command spell as a command code, and more importantly, you've completed mission 4 for a copy of Bestia del Sol. It increases your party's damage and Altrium drops, so keep it on at all times. This should complete missions 54 and 75. Then you complete Goddess Scripture 3. At this point, you're gated by 400 Altrium. To take care of this, I did the Abyss Sargasso free quest four times. So by this point, you should have missions 43, 67, 83, 88, 92, and 95 done for 30 missions complete, at least. Mission 95 gives you another Binary Star Songstress, which is your single target damage CE. So that goes on your main attacker assuming charge isn't an issue. 
now that you have Altrium, do Eco Mode Drive-In. Follow that with Kaiju Comet Beta to fight Venus Beast Elichon. Then you have Queen's High School 1. Once that's done, you're gated by Mission 21 and need to defeat Earth Attribute enemies. For this, I went back to Big Blue Tank and did it twice. Only the Gazer's an Earth enemy, but defeating Elichon unlocked another Bestia del Sol copy, which you can get by defeating 40 demonic enemies. By this point, I finished missions 21, 29, and 46, also 90, which is related to Silver Badges. Now move on to Queen's High School 2. Node 1 is versus a Saber Zhang Yu who nerfs your Buster cards. Node 2 is an unwinnable fight against Space Ishtar. Just stay alive until it automatically ends. You'll have completed missions 24, 25, 26, 37, and 48. Then do the Zenjo Free Quest once, which will complete missions 27 and 89. Then you do Farewell School of Our Youth and Kaiju Comet Gamma. Then it's Green Kitchen 1. Following that, you're gated by Mission 71, which is to kill 15 Loved One enemies. Only Fergus and Altrio meet that requirement at this point in the event, and Arthur is locked behind another quest. Thankfully, Texas Beyond helps with that too, so you can swap once you unlock it. To this end, I completed Texas Beyond's free quest twice, to complete missions 14 and 86. Then, once Darth Cheta is unlocked, you could do that free quest eight times, which will complete missions 15, 22, 49, 50, 55, 68, 69, 70, 71, 93, and 96. Now, Green Kitchen 2 should be available. Node 1 has a Sea Demon that nullifies your buffs, and the Chicken gives enemies buster resistance. Node 2 pits you against the Benny Enma, who gains charge whenever you hit her with a buster card. On break, she gets a buff that gives her attack whenever she's hit by anything, so don't take too long. This will complete missions 32, 58, 59, and 81. Then comes Premonition of Saber Wars. After that is Kaiju Comet Omega. Uh, this is King Protea with two health bars for a combined 600k health. She pops her health skill immediately, so if you can't burn her down, you're in for a long and painful fight. Maybe check if there are any commas on tap with a damage CE. This will complete mission 23, and bring you to Dark Mana. Note 2 is a fight against an 8 million health Sigurd. I think you can actually win this with strong enough crits, especially in the rerun with Superhuman Orion, but you only need to hold the fort for 5 turns before the battle ends, so may as well just do that. Notes 4 and 5 are solos with event supports. None of them are particularly difficult. Note 6 pits your whole team against Space Ishtar, but it's also very straightforward. Doing this will complete missions 38, 40, 51, 62, and 63. You can get another Bestia del Sol now, but we're actually going to hold off on that for the moment. Now, if you haven't already, make sure to limit break Binary Star Songstress at your earliest opportunity. Do the Dark Mana free quest four times. This will complete missions 11, 44, 72, 78, and 84. Then you do To the Beginning of Space, which brings you to Primitive Red Rose. At this point in the event, you can only do the first two nodes. Note 2 is an unwinnable fight against Space Ishtar where you need to survive three turns. To progress into Note 3, you're going to need all six Goddess Scriptures. One is mandatory from early in the main quest, and another you got from the Space Cat Bounty. This leaves you with four. First off, we need a large amount of Altrium to make this happen, so let's finish off some missions related to quest completions. Do the Zenjo Free Quest once to complete Mission 76, the Green Kitchen Free Quest twice to complete Missions 30, 65, 77, and 91, the Training Planet Kelton Free Quest five times to complete Mission 79. At this point, we'll have access to two more copies of Bestio del Sol and enough Altrium to start pursuing them. Because they amplify our Altrium intake, we should prioritize them over the scriptures. Start off by spending 110 Altrium for the Martha Bounty and Fighter. She's a Saber, but she'll change into a Ruler if you hit her with a Quick Card. Unless you're running an Avenger, you probably want to avoid that. She gets Attack and Crit Buffs with each Bar Break, so watch out for that. Once you're done, spend 180 Altrium on the Cost Tamamo Bounty. She'll try and curse anyone who attacks her. She also gains attack every time this happens. Like Martha, her Saber Badge can be broken with a Quick Card, turning her into a Caster. Then spend 320 Altrium on the Solitary Okita Wanted poster. She's a Saber who turns into an Alter Ego when crit. It's worth noting this makes her charge bar shorter, so don't do this when she's on 3 bars. She also gets crit chance and damage on break. This whole process completes Mission 3, giving you another Bestia del Sol. After this, I did one run of Illusionary Planet Caribbean's Free Quest. This brought me to 400 Aldrium, which I used to buy the edgy Fett Wanted poster. He's a 2-bar archer with 8 Hornet trash mobs. These give NP damage to the other enemies when they die. 
namely Demia himself. He gains sure hit and a full NP bar on break, so insulate your main attacker and remember that he ignores defense buffs before you pull the trigger. Winning this fight gives you the powerful Mistress of the Heavens command code and also completes mission 7 for yet another Bestial del Sol. Following this, I did another four runs of the Illusionary Planet Caribbean free quest to complete mission 80. Once you do that, get the Kaiser Origin Wanted poster for 130 Altrium. It's Caesar and he gets full charge on break and drains your meter. Taking him out completes missions 17, 18, 2, and 19. It also unlocks the Thief Twin Pirates Wanted poster, which you should take. Grab Teacher Bao Bays while you're here, too. Twin Pirates is Rider Ann and Mary as a saber. If you hit her with a Buster card, she turns back into a Rider, making her charge bar longer. She has 7 stacks of Guts, which leaves her at 1 health. Every time she loses a Gut stack, she gains a full bar. Because of her enmity mechanic, she'll gain the maximum amount of damage and insta-give anyone who isn't protected. The good news though is that if you use several Servant cards, or if you use someone's NP to interrupt their chain, you can actually take off up to 3 stacks per turn, which is pretty nice. Alright, then we move on to Teacher Bao Bei. This is a Saber Neza that turns into a Lancer when hit with an Arts card. On break, she gets a Defense buff, also a Stacking NP Damage buff. The fight should be long over before that becomes relevant. After this, get the Wanted poster for Poisonous Cooking Master. This is Serenity as a Saber. Uh, some offensive stat-related debuffs can drop her badge and turn her into an assassin. She can also poison your whole frontline, but given that she has no protection, she shouldn't pose any problems. Doing these will complete missions 33 and 34. At this point, I went to Wandering Planet Alton to do its free quest five times. This one's super efficient if you can feel the Space Ishtar team, and a huge pain in the ass if you can't. It features Berserkers, with two Ruler Servants on the final wave. It drops all three currencies, so if you can clear it reliably with a bunch of Bestia del Sols, you can get a fair bit of shop farming done while you're gathering Altrium. Doing this will complete missions 47, 66, and 82. Now go back to the shop and buy the Space Toshizo Wanted poster and fight him. On break, he gets a chance-based evade for five turns. With enough Bestia del Sols, you can run Sweet Crystal on your main attacker and just brute force him. Defeating him gets you the Balanced Scale of the Universe command code. It also completes mission 6. Now you can go to the Ancient Shrine and do all the Goddess Scripture quests. Once you do that, return to Primitive Red Rose and now you can progress in Node 3 which is a solo battle. Take the Atlas Mystic Code for this one. So the enemy as Start just buffs herself throughout the fight. I spammed BAA chains on regular turns and NP'd when possible into a full Arts chain. You actually heal a ton in this fight, so as long as you don't get one shot, you can go for a while in Phase 1. Pop the Atlas Invulnerability on the turn you break the bar because a Start goes apeshit with crits and she can in fact one-shot you. Once you do this, try to follow it up with your NP damage skill into a final NP. With your own buffs, you should one-shot a start's final health bar. Now with that done, you can do the credits quest to get your Grail. Or if you're watching this in 2023, maybe a lore. With this, you'll have completed missions 41, 97, and 98. Now buy the Space Rice Balls Wanted poster and fight him. At this point, the standard bounties are piss easy, so I won't mention mechanics unless there's something crazy or particularly obnoxious. Then head on over to the Return of Refugee X free quest, which is actually an interlude. This is the quest that gives you Mysterious Heroine X's skill upgrade. It also counts towards Total Saber War 2 quest completions, so you'll have to do it no matter what. After this, buy the Skullkeeper Wanted poster. It's Salome who gets full NP on break, so tank up. Now odds are you're short on Altrium, and your only remaining grind mission should be number 31 for demonic kills. Green Kitchen and Big Blue Tank both work, so take your pick and grind until it's done. If you still need Altrium after this, go with whatever's convenient. Now mission 31 will be done, and you can go and fight Abby the Prankster. Get her wanted poster from the shop, and keep in mind that she's a saber that turns into a foreigner if she gets a defensive debuff. Defeating her completes mission 8. Alright, now for the hard part. You can get the King Elichon wanted poster. These are three Elizabeths with big health bars. 400k on the first, and 600k on the second. You have to kill all these servants within 5 turns of the first going down, or else they start reviving. Lancer Elizabeth NP seals your servants on break, and she also applies a delayed skill seal. She can also burn on her normal attacks. Brave Ellie burns servants that attack her. On break, she gives all enemies a turn of invulnerability and 5 turns of a substantial defense buff. On top of this, she has an invuln on her regular kit that she loves to spam. Caster Ellie burns your frontline and throws on a burn amplifier to boot when her bar breaks. She also throws another burn amp on your team when she dies. Annoyingly, the Ellies can use buffs even after your frontline is dead. So yeah, have fun with that. 
This is a very annoying fight, and you may benefit from bringing a support that has a limit broken binary star CE. They can finish the fight once your frontline gets worn down. You'll want to hit Brave Ellie while you have the chance to, though if your damage is enough to snuff, she'll just burn your attacker. Otherwise, stay on the attack or run someone like Jean to remove all the debuffs you're taking. You can even slow play the first set of bars with a borrowed Jean. This lets you wait out Brave Ellie's defense buff. As long as you can force Lancer and Caster Elizabeth to NP on the same turn with stuns, you can keep this up for quite a while. Also, if you have access to Summer BB, you can leverage your passive to just ignore all those burn mechanics. Defeating the Ellie Trio completes missions 5, 87, and 99. Moreover, it unlocks the Galaxy Guardian Challenge Quest. This pits you against Mysterious Heroine Double X. She has two bars with the second one being a massive 1.7 million health. During Phase 1, she gets extra defense. She also stuns and taunts a target at the start of every turn where there isn't already a taunted target. The taunt is for 3 turns and the stun is for 1. These can be cleansed. Once you break her bar, you enter Phase 2. She loses her defense effect and gains a large attack buff. As far as I could tell, her taunt skill stops stunning and turns her target into a saber instead, meaning your alter egos lose their extra damage and everyone eats big damage from her NP. Once she hits 800k health, she turns all of your servants, including your back row, into threats against humanity, meaning she hits them even harder with her third skill active. More troublingly, her NP fills the max every turn. If you're about to hit that 800k mark, you absolutely have to set up for a one-shot, otherwise she'll start blowing up your team. For this particular fight, I'd recommend running the Atlas Uniform and Mecha Ellie. You can cleanse the taunt combo if she gets tagged, and involve her if she gets marked again. Her damage output is also substantial, and because MHXX turns your servants into taunters, you can exploit this to rapidly cycle through supports and keep Mecha Ellie online. Honestly, this is way easier than fucking Ellie Cerberus. But with MHXX defeated, you unlock the wanted poster for the real challenge quest, Dark Round's Shadow. But that's something we'll get to in the next video. Alright, with that said, uh, yeah, hope you found this useful to anyone who hasn't started the event yet. You got a shot, go for it. And to everyone else, I don't know what to say. Except the next video is going to be even less timely. So look forward to that. Bye. <laughs>